Hello to all, I am Vishnu. So in this video, I am going to talk about some receptor pharmacology kind of concept. And actually I had made this note on depression uh, two years back. And uh, I was actually referring a book known as Pharmacotherapy Principles and Practice. And uh, you know, in the chapter uh, depression, they have given an amazing table you know, in which uh, different receptors of serotonin and many other receptors, what happens when they get blocked or activated. So, I just noted that down that time. You know, what happens is the biggest reason we actually don't understand or fail to remember side effects is because we don't understand pharmacodynamics properly. Because pharmacodynamics means it, re it relates to receptor pharmacology. Pharmacodynamics is all about receptors. I'm not talking about G protein coupled receptors, iron receptors and all these higher level things. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about simple receptors. What happens when they get activated and what happens when they get blocked. If you know that, then you can predict pharmacological actions of medicine through your own words. Because you understand what will happen when that particular receptor is activated or blocked. So let me give you some examples. So it will enhance your confidence and it will also make you, you know, motivated to find out the reason behind things and learn smart. So first I'll start with 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A. Okay. Now why I said that together. First we need to understand that 5-HT means 5-hydroxytryptamine which is also known as serotonin. Serotonin elevates your mood. Serotonin makes you excited. You know serotonin you know gives you that uh, energy means that is why it can make you insomniac also at times it can also induce anxiety to some extent. Now why I said 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A is because please remember 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A are enemies. 5-HT1A type receptor and 5-HT2A type receptor are enemies. That means 5-HT2A will increase your anxiety, 5-HT2A will increase your insomnia because anxiety increases, 5-HT2A will increase your aggressive behavior, to some extent it can cause depression also and it you know uh, increases your blood pressure, it actually increases your blood pressure. 5-HT1A what it does it, it does exactly the opposite. So as I said that 5-HT2A will increase your anxiety, 5-HT2A will increase your aggressive behavior, 5-HT2A will you know cause insomnia, 5-HT1A will reduce all these things. So 5-HT1A has anti-anxiety effects, 5-HT1A has antidepressant effects, 5-HT1A also has antipsychotic activity means it reduces psychosis or aggressive behavior. But 5-HT1A, if it is activated, it will reduce your blood pressure. 5-HT2A increases your blood pressure. 5-HT1A causes hypotension. That means it reduces your blood pressure. So, Warshioxetin is a molecule. Warshioxetin is actually an antidepressant. It's a novel antidepressant that actually activates 5-HT1A receptors. Okay. Now, let's talk about 5-HT2C. Now, 5-HT2C... You know what happens uh, if it gets activated, it causes anorexia. So anorexia means you will not feel hungry. You will not feel hungry means it will cause weight loss. 5-HT2C also reduces dopamine level. And that is exactly the reason why even though some people take antidepressants, they may get suicidal tendencies. There are a lot of reports of people taking antidepressants, especially the pediatric population. They take antidepressants and there is a warning, you know, <clears throat> we should monitor their mood or maybe suicidal tendencies or whatever kind of things, mood changes and all, we should be closely monitoring. Why? Because most of the molecules may interact with 5-HT2C receptor and when 5-HT2C is activated, dopamine gets reduced. Dopamine makes you feel good about yourself. So when dopamine gets reduced, you no longer feel good about yourself. So that may lead to suicidal tendencies. And when dopamine gets reduced, it can also cause sexual dysfunction as well because dopamine gives you feelings. So it can cause sexual dysfunction as well. That is also another reason why antidepressants can cause sexual dysfunction except bupropion, mirtazapine, some molecules are there, especially bupropion. 
so this is one thing that i wanted to tell you then we have 5ht3 receptors you know very well 5ht3 receptor blockers we usually use in the hospital in the clinical setting especially if you are going in flight also we have orally disintegrating 5ht3 blockers that is ondansetron we have you know orally disintegrating it will just dissolve in your tongue so when 5ht3 receptor gets activated it causes nausea and it can also lead to gi disturbances so when 5ht3 receptors are blocked it causes the opposite right now let's come to dopamine now when dopamine gets activated i already told you dopamine gives you euphoria it will give you amazing energy you will feel like you can do literally anything on a particular day dopamine can make you agitated because dopamine will always tell you that what you are doing is right so if anybody tries to question you you will always try to aggressively suppress them down with your beliefs so this is exactly what happens in delusions hallucinations and all the symptoms of schizophrenia because dopamine is getting activated dopamine in the cerebellum cerebellum is the part of your brain which actually you know controls your voluntary muscle functions so dopamine actually controls your voluntary muscle functions as well that is why when dopamine gets blocked that is what happens in parkinson's disease or maybe extra pyramidal symptoms you get numerous symptoms of you know you have postural instability you have movement disorders and all these things or gait and all these things that we see in or maybe bradykinesia that we see in parkinson's disease now let's come to you know uh, alpha adrenergic blockers so in alpha adrenergic we have alpha 1 and we have alpha 2 now alpha 1 and alpha 2 are enemies let's tell let me tell you how alpha 1 receptors actually increase noradrenaline and alpha 2 receptors to some extent reduce noradrenaline so that is why alpha 1 blockers are used in hypertension right that is why we have alpha 1 blockers which we use in hypertension if you are using alpha 1 blocker there is another problem also that can cause sexual dysfunction in males so that has also been seen with alpha 1 blocking activity then we have cholinergic receptors and anticholinergic receptors so please remember cholinergic receptors will activate all the secretions of your body right you know starting from your you know tears in the in the eye it will be, can be the saliva in your mouth it can be the sweat which is produced by the sweat glands you know it can be you know urination it can be diarrhea everything it can be the secretions in your uh, bronchial system also that is why you know in organophosphate poisoning uh, usually people die from respiratory failure because organophosphates are you know cholinesterase inhibitors so that means they usually increase the level of acetylcholine and acetylcholine increases means respiratory secretions will increase that lead to respiratory failure acetylcholine can also increase the secretions of your stomach right hydrochloric acid so anticholinergic will do exactly the opposite so it can cause you know blurred vision because the tears will not be produced properly it can cause a dry mouth which is known as serostomia then it can reduce hydrochloric acid production then it can cause constipation because the opposite of diarrhea is constipation it will reduce uh, you know gastric transit uh it can cause you know urinary incontinence so that can also predispose a person to urinary tract infections and definitely it it has bronchodilatory effect that is why we have you know salbutamol ipratropium bromide so ipratropium is an anticholinergic so it has bronchodilatory effect because it reduces the secretions in the bronchial system so these are some examples that i wanted to tell you so this you can get from different tables you know but uh, i believe that actually i'm trying to write a book in which i will summarize the activities of most of the receptors in our body and uh, how uh, what happens when it gets activated and deactivated so let let's see how it goes so i hope this video is informative for you see you in the next video until then it's bye